So, uh, let's start the test. The question is, what is the best and the easiest way of Terraform to read and write secrets from HashiCorp Vault? So, HashiCorp is the company which has which uh, created Terraform tool, right? And there are different other uh, tools provided by HashiCorp himself. Like, if I search for HashiCorp, you'll see there is Terraform, then you will have Vault, and there's another tool named as uh, console so there are different tools by HashiCorp Terraform is used to create infrastructure which is creating resources using code and Vault is used to store the secrets for example if you have any database created using Terraform you will store the secrets in Vault like the database and the password so whenever you see a question which is asking you easiest way for Terraform to read and write secrets from HashiCorp Vault so we will have to use the Vault provider so provider for Vault and if we see that provider we can search for vault provider terraform so in the whole list of different providers you can see this is vault so there are different uh, providers in hashicorp you have seen for aws and then azure go gcp so whenever you want to manage secret using hashicorp vault you have to use vault provider all of these other methods are uh, wrong because you don't have to use Jenkins you don't have to have API access using app role and CLI access from the same machine is not required you have to use world provider then in, in, in Terraform enterprise a workspace can be mapped to how many VCS repos so VCS stands for version control system which is git so each workspace will be mapped to one VCS Next thing you have is HashiCorp offers multiple versions of Terraform including Terraform open source then you have Terraform cloud, Terraform enterprise and which of the following for feature is only available in the enterprise edition. So there are different accounts for Terraform so let me show that with this PDF here so you can, can you see the screen? Yeah I can see it. Yeah, so screen. you can see uh, there's open source then so there's much cloud then there's self-hosted so enterprise is self-hosted and cloud has free team and governance and business and this is the one we use OSS so these are all the features available to OSS but the question is asking which of the following Terraform is only available to the enterprise option so here you can see it says locally managed installation and self-hosted is also what means by locally managed which means you can have your uh, enterprise that is on your infrastructure that is on on-prem you can also use uh, enterprise version of terraform to maintain a code in, in your on-prem and it, it can also be used whenever there is no internet connection apart from this yeah. it also has options like private module then audit logs locally managed and sso but this is asking for only one uh, which is available only for enterprise but this others are also available to terraform cloud so if you see here down uh, private module so yeah here is private module registry which is not available to terraform oss but available to terraform cloud as well as to the enterprise. yeah to enterprise as well right so this is the option you have to select when it is asking only what is available for enterprise which is locally managed installation then you have which terraform command will force a resource to be destroyed and recreated even if there are no configuration changes that would require it so Let's take an example of Amazon EC2 instance and we have used user data script for it. And let's say the instance has been created but the script has not run cor correctly. So you have to just rerun, uh, just recreate the instance, not the whole infrastructure. So for that, yeah, so there are, there are, there are commands for it. And if we go to the code, so let's go to the VS code and in here, let's go to the terminal and see the commands which are dif different commands present so if i do terraform here you can see a different option but we have to look to this one here so taint taint means marks a resource instance as not fully functional which means if you do this uh, terraform will only create the particular instance not the whole infrastructure so this was taint before in the previous version but now it has been replaced to terraform apply hyphen replace option Okay. So question uh, like the uh, options can have either taint or apply hyphen replace so both of them are correct so here they don't have taint apply hyphen replace then the name of the resource 
will only create that resource and not anything else. So for example, so for example, let's see, let's take uh, this as an example right now. Here I have an instance created, which is AWS instance dot node. Yeah. Right. And if the and you can see here you have a user data, which is running Ansible hyphen node SS, which is this this script. So let's say something happened and one of the commands didn't run. Uh, the SSD restart option didn't run. So there might be some uh, configuration problem and your app is not fully functional. So you don't want to destroy anything else. You don't want to destroy VPC RDS. Just want to uh, recreate the instance so that the script should run again. So for that, you can either use the taint command or you can use a terraform apply hyphen replace equals to the name of the resource, which is resource dot AWS instance dot node. And this terraform format is not the command to recreate. It is only for like uh, aligning all your equal to signs and checking the format. If it is correct, according to terraform, then apply refresh only will change the state will only update the state. It will not do anything with the configuration or with the apply. Then you have destroy, which is going to actually destroy the whole thing, which is stored in the state. So if you just want to apply, like recreate, destroy and recreate one of the instance or one of the resource, you can use this command. The next thing you have is you want to use Terraform import to start managing infrastructure that was not originally provisioned through infrastructure as code. Before you can import the resource current state, what must you do in order to prepare to manage these resources using Terraform? So Terraform import is a command which let's say right now in my cloud uh, account, in my AWS account, I have four resources created manually. I have not created it using Terraform. I have gone through the term console and I, I launched four instances. So it is not managed by Terraform because Terraform will not have the information about it in the state file. If I do Terraform destroy here, the four instances will not destroy because it was not created through Terraform, right? Yeah. So if you want to manage those four instances, which are created manually through Terraform, then you have to use the command Terraform import this command Terraform import. And when you do this, yeah, when you do this, all the configuration is going to be stored in the state file. Like then Terraform will start managing it. Like if you want, then you can either destroy it or create or make changes to the, uh, make changes to the app resources because now it is stored in the state, right? So yes. You just type Terraform import or Terraform import and, uh, and EC2 and send name. Or yes. Terraform import on so Terraform import and then it will all store it. But before you do that, you have to also make one more thing. Like Terraform import is just going to store the state and the configuration in the state file. But it will not create a code like this, like we create. So after you do Terraform import, you have to also write down the configuration file, configuration code. Like this instance has this, this, this. And then uh, if you run, then it, you can manage, start managing it. So the question is asking before you import the resource current state, what must you do in order to prepare to manage these resources? So before you do that, you have to update the configuration file to include the new resources because Terraform import is not going to do that. You just, it will just store the state, but it will not create the configuration file. So you have to create the configuration file, then do Terraform import and you can then start managing the resource using Terraform. You don't have to modify the Terraform state file because that is automatically done. And then you don't have to shut down or stop using resources being imported. So this is the correct answer. Update the configuration file to include the new resources. Then you have what is the purpose of local execution provisioner. So if you have seen, we learn about a provisioners. We learn about the remote provisioner, local exec provisioner and file provisioner. So remote provisioner was used whenever you want to run commands on machine that is created using Terraform. So you see to instance that is created through Terraform. If I run anything in remote remote, let's say I run sudo apt update. So it is going to update all the packages in the instance that is created using Terraform. But if you use local exec provisioner, it is going to run the commands on my local machine. Here, if you, yeah. So let's see if, if we have any local exec provisioner or not. So I don't think we have local exec provisioner. So, but remote, uh, let's go and check it out on the documentation itself so that you can get the idea. Local if you, one? Yeah, if you remember, we did it already when we were doing the sessions. Yeah. So, so it's number three. Is it? Local exec provisioner invokes a local executable on the resource that is created. 
then this invokes process on the machine running Terraform. So this machine, my local machine on which the Terraform is running to create resources. If I use local exec provisioner and I ran some command, it is going to do some stuff on my local machine, not on the instance that is created. Right, so if you see here, it says provisioner local execution and then command is echo, echo the private IP. Right, of this instance. So it is going to echo the private IP on my terminal. So that I can use it for any purpose, let's say SSH or anything. Right, so local exec is used whenever you want to run the command on, my, on your own machine. So local exec provisioner invokes a local executable after the resource is created and it is invoked on the machine running Terraform. So if you go back to the equation again, what is the purpose? So it executes, a look, it invokes a local executable and it executes one or more command on the machine running Terraform. Yeah. Yeah, so it does not execute a command on the resource to invoke update of Terraform state. It does not have to do anything with the state. To invoke the resource is only executable in the local infrastructure where the Terraform is deployed. Ensures that the resource is only executed. So that is not also the option. So it, this is the two things that, that I've seen in the uh, in the documentation itself, invokes a local executable and machine run Terraform. Invokes local executable, machine run Terraform. So which of the following best describes the Terraform provider? So you have seen that there are different types of providers, uh, AWS, then you have Azure, then you have Kubernetes, GCP. So whenever you use that provider the and you run the Terraform init command, it is going to download all the information about the provider. So in the backend, it is going to actually get the access of all the APIs. API stands for application programming interface, which means let's say uh, you want to list some instances in Terraform that you can do use list some instances in the AWS. You can do that using Terraform by providing the outputs, right? So which means you're getting the API access of that provider when you use it. So the, which of the base following describes the provider. So uh, apart from this, like it is a plugin that a Terraform uses to translate the API interactions with a service or provider. Yeah. So it is not a container for multiple resource. It does not describe an infrastructure object such as virtual network or compute instance or other components. We do it in the main.tf, not in the provider.tf. So this is not the correct answer as well. And it serves as a parameter for Terraform module that allows the module to be customized. This is also the right, not the right answer. So it is a plugin. Awesome. Provider and plugins, it can also be set as plugin, it can also be set as provider. So it is a plugin that Terraform uses to translate the API interaction with a service or a provider. Okay. Then you have Kristen is using modules to provision an Azure, Azure environment for a new application. And she is using this for following code and specifying the version her virtual machine should ensure. She is calling the correct module which of the following provides support for versioning of the modules. So here this is the code and she is using a a uh, module from the Azure repository. So if you go here, search for modules, Terraform, same way as you get the different Terraform providers, you also get the different modules. So if I go here and registry, So you can see here they have Terraform AWS VPC. So if I use this, I don't have to create the, uh, write the code. I can just start using it from this module itself. So Terraform module which creates VPC resources on AWS. So same way here in this code, Kristen is trying to use the module and she's using this module, Azure Compute Azure RM, right? And she's using, she's using this version, which is 3.8.0. You can see there are different versions present for all modules. So you can add a version module here and start using it. If you see the code here as well, it has a version and you can use any of them. Like if I want to use three point, which is the latest one, I can also choose to use this, this, this or anything. Like it has different versions. If you see, if you want, you can see the code here in the GitHub on the GitHub and they will have different uh, commits made. So if you want to have the previous one, you can use the previous one. If, if you want to use the latest one, you can use the latest one. So the question is, which of the following provides support for versioning of the module? So you yeah. can see this is the public one. This is the public one which you, we have seen here. They have, they have versions for them, right? You can use more yeah, versions public, which yeah. for public yeah. module or GitLab. with the GitLab, right? Yeah. Then uh, next question is select the answer below that completes the following statement. Terraform cloud can be managed from CLI, but requires what? So if you have seen that when you use AWS, 
configure we put access key id and secret access key right so for us to work with aws cli we require access keys and secret access key, secret key yeah. but here in terraform you require api token yeah, whenever you use with terraform cloud right cloud. Okay. so when you use terraform cloud with the cli you have to use api token so terraform cloud is uh, this one here you can see there is Terraform OSS, then there is cloud. In cloud, you have free team governance and business, and then you have Terraform Enterprise, which is self hosted. Okay. So, when you want to use this Terraform cloud through your terminal, through your CLI, you have to pass API token. So, you also get, you also get a management console like you got, you get in the AWS to click and do stuff, but you also get, uh, here you also get the UI as well as the CLI. So if you want to manage it through CLI, you have to use the API token. Okay. What is the downside to using Terraform to interact with sensitive data such as reading secrets from the vault? So even though we are using vault, which is HashiCorp's another product to store secrets, whenever we use vault or when we use variables, we all the stuff, all the sensitive data, they are stored in the state file and in, they, they are visible to everyone who can have access to state file. So it is in plain text. So secrets are persisted to state file. So they are stayed inside the state file if you, even though you are using vault or even though you are using variables. Yeah. 